You're not in presentation, but there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thanks for listening, guys. So I'm going. I'm Jenny, and I'm going to present to you on the use of a legacy substrate to increase land reclamation potential in the Alberta or Athabasca oil sands region. So a little more specifically, how does addition, adding pyrogenic carbon, or as we saw earlier, biochar, um, affect soil carbon respiration and nitrogen mineralization? So just a bit of an interesting fact here oh, is disturbance is the main change in the oil sands and is a big contributor to this problem. So a bit of background where we're going, uh, data and methods, and on to the this. So in the Athabasca oil sands region, up in this area here, it's typically boreal forest with a rather cool climate. And where I'm going with this is what's going on in the soil, the processes, how much time it takes for those to happen. The main disturbance up there used to be fire and has now become more resource extraction, where changes from natural regeneration to where we need to go in and reclaim land and try to restore something similar or with the end land use in mind. So this is a big change going from secondary to primary succession. And with that, you can think about different ecological processes that might not come in primary succession, but you would find that in secondary succession. So with reclamation and restoration on the oil sands, there are redevelopment plans. It's mandatory for them to have them. They're required, they're regulated. They include things like landscape characteristics, topography, um, and most a lot of vegetation, where a lot of the focus goes, especially right now, on using native vegetation, and into soils, but more so on soil characteristics such as the depth, consistency, texture, the color, EC and CEC. But it's all geared towards having an equivalent land capability, and as Keto et al. quoted in one of their recent papers, long-term ecosystem sustainability and ending up with the equivalent land capability can't happen unless you have the establishment of biogeochemical processes that are similar to what was there before. So my question is, with pyrogenic carbon, the legacy substrate, can we fix that? Can we get back there? This is just a bit of description on pyrogenic carbon or biochar. As we saw earlier, we had a bit more detail there on how it's formed. There's different kinds of biochar, whether depending on the source of what it's from and the temperature to which the pyrolysis occurs. So there can be slightly charred biomass, which occurs a lot in forest fires, all the way down to something like petroleum coke, which is just a uh, waste byproduct from oil sands refining already. So again, my goal is, will the addition of pyrogenic carbon uh, add to this? And <laughs> um, will this differ with different reclamation materials. As right now, there's different kinds of soils being used to create the soil sort, or the new uh, ground layers. And will this mat differ with the different pyrogenic car carbons? So, materials and methods. So this da data was collected by my supervisor and his students, and they collected three from three different kinds of soil. So peat mineral mix, a uh, forest floor mineral mix, and a forest soil post-fire. The forest soil post-fire is the natural type of ecosystem. Then there's three, four different treatments. You had the control, a peat, or, sorry, no, I'm off. There's the control, the biochar, which was made here with using pyrolysis. Then there's charcoal, which was collected from a wildfire site. And then there's petroleum coke byproduct, which was collected from an oil sands refining unit. Uh, what we measured in order to look at this was the concentration of CO2 and nitrogen mineralization that was occurring in soils. And I'm completely off, but this is the data that, we co that was collected. They collected the raw data, then took the average, sorry, and it was a cum cumulative average as pools store up in the soil. So that's why it's cumulative. And then I entered it into R. And this is what I got. So the goal with this, this is carbon respiration. And the goal with this is to look at how it returns to the control or exceeds the control. So this is peat, our natural forest soil, and our forest floor mix. And you can see the black is control and how it changes through each. So it actually adding an amendment does increase 
the carbon respiration occurring in the soils. And again, here you can see the similar effect or similar plot with nitrogen mineralization. However, you can see that even with amendments, it doesn't quite reach what would happen under a natural system. Um, and important to note on these is this, the y-axis scales, which are different in each one. Um, yeah. So here you can kind of see it's all put together. And again, these should be line plots, but that's to come. And you can see the difference in how the peat and the forest floor mix and the natural soils compare and how it differs extremely between the different materials used. So ultimately what's next? I would like to add the standard area and fit these curves with an equation. Then I'll use that equation and test the residuals and hopefully get a model that you can compare to the existing soil and then you can be able to predict what or how it would best compare to a natural soil and how adding an amendment to a certain type of reclamation material might improve the chances of the soil ecological function. And with that, that's it.